Boxers present six of the men who've won titles at national level and gone on to become among their country's best loved fighters. From Freddie Welsh and Jim Driscoll at the start of the century, to Len Harvey in the 30s and Bruce Woodcock in the 40s, up to Henry Cooper and Terry Downs in the 60s, this video features action from six of the giants of British boxing. British and European lightweight champion Freddie Welsh takes on America's Patty McFarland. London, 30th of May, 1910. This fight fought at the National Sporting Club in London and Welsh is on the left-hand side of your screen. Slightly the shorter man with the lighter coloured hair. European champion and British champion. Won the European title in August 1909 and the British title in November of the same year. The fight billed by the Sporting Club is for the World Lightweight title also a stake of 1900 pounds up for grabs for the two men McFarland looking to rush in call him the pride of the stockyards tough man from the Irish quarter of Chicago more upright stance good left hand though And another good flashing left hand from McFarland and already Welsh is knowing he's very much in a fight here. These two men of course have fought before. They met in 1908 in the United States. Welsh lost on the first occasion in the second fight, 25 rounds as a draw. Well, not too much between them in this opening period. McFarlane probably just about getting the better of it. Welsh looking to tie him up. And the round ends with a good right hand from McFarland. Who on my card would have taken that? So into the third round. Freddie Welsh with his back to us, the British and European champion. see these two men so well matched a lot of clinching and mauling McFarlane maybe just beating Welsh to the punch at this stage using his reach advantage well. Good right hand from McFarland. And again Welsh just soaking up another left jab and doing not a lot more than just clinch inside but at last a combination, left-right combination from Welsh. Good right hand from McFarland, good body shot. always at the National Sporting Club not too much noise from the crowd that's the convention Welsh quick on his feet starting to use his mobility better but another good left hand from McFarland and Welsh took it Welsh trying to unleash that left hand which looks like the power shot Good 
chopping right there from McFarlane, just 22 years old, clearly a very fit and strong man. McFarland lost his first professional fight by knockout, but he's been undefeated since. So into round 14. Welsh starting quickly with a couple of clubbing left hooks into the body and using his mobility now, using the full width of the ring. Trying to provide a mobile target, just trying to get in and out and score punches, but McFarland, with that reach advantage, is still able to get through and score. Bit of bruising around McFarland's face now, and a look of desperation as he tries to unload his big shots. Welsh this time just holding on. Welsh on the right hand side of your picture. Well, Welsh certainly doesn't want to take any of those big right hands from McFarland. And he only just managed to cover up as the American tried to unload. Farland with the more static style. And Welsh coming, jumping in again. Throwing punches from crazy angles, scoring shots. But McFarland takes them well and comes back throwing two or three good stiff left jabs. Words for Welsh from his corner. And McFarland's having a good round now. There again, you see Welsh doing little more than just covering up and clinching in close. And soaking up that left lead of the taller American. Good right uppercut from Welsh, better work. Oh, Welsh is thrown across the ring and caught by a left hand as well. You saw the strength of McFarlane once more. And he's clearly bossed this round. But Welsh lands with a big overhand right just in the closing seconds of the round. But a good round for the American. Round 19. McFarland starts it with a, a long left lead. McFarland with his back to us now on the right hand side of the picture. Neither of these men truly destructive single punch knockout artists. Having to rely instead on the build up of points over the rounds. Nineteenth round though, and both of them still looking full of fire. Just get the impression that McFarlane may be in close in those clinches, doing just a little bit more. Welsh being bullied around the ring once more. Right left from McFarlane again, and the left lead. And once more, Welsh just wants to hold on, trying to get inside that left hand all the time, trying to work in close. And this time, Welsh does get a little bit of success, doubling up well on the left hand. Welsh is back to us, tries to plant the left hand. This time he wants to cover up. Again, McFarland onto the offensive. 
right hand into the body from Welsh good body shot and now McFarland wants to lean on Welsh beating him twice to the punch with the left hand fascinating contrast in styles these two fighters so well matched and there again another close round so into the 20th and final round the two fighters just touch gloves nice show of appreciation from both men is it going to be the Welshman on the left hand side of your picture dancing around the ring or is it going to be the American from Chicago Packy McFarland Farland aims a big right hand but Welsh saw it coming and comes back throwing body shots of his own just one big punch might be enough and there's a good right hand from McFarland but Welsh takes it well right uppercut from the American crucial last moments of the fight well swinging in McFarlane trying to plant himself trying to look for the big shots and again a whistling right hand from McFarlane only just off target Welsh goes in with a right over the top and again the clinch these men must be so tired but keeping the action right up to the final bell good right hand from McFarland as they came out of the clinch it must be close Welsh bravely keeping coming forward although the cleaner shots you Sensor still coming from McFarland. Welsh jumping in with body shots. Hoping to sway it, even in these dying seconds. Good right hand from McFarland. And that really backed Welsh up. Welsh continuing to dive in through desperation coming up towards the final bell and there it is a real fight for the connoisseur and the result perhaps quite rightly from the referee is a draw Jim Driscoll defends his British featherweight title against former holder Frank Spike Robson London, 30th of January, 1911. You can hardly fail to be able to tell these two men apart. Peerless Jim Driscoll in the black shorts on the left-hand side of your picture. Driscoll regarded as the world's number one featherweight. Robson in the light trunks, now 34 years old, professional since 1896. Frank Spike Robson from South Shields up in the northeast. The Lonsdale belt at stake in this contest. Two men fought nine months earlier. And on that occasion, it was Driscoll who emerged as the victor with a 15th round knockout. And Robson, in the end, took a pretty bad beating. Driscoll starting well, as always, behind that classic left jab. Driscoll keeps his chin held high, but despite that, his hands are so fast...
Robson fought for the world lightweight title against Joe Gans back in 1908 suffered another knockout on that occasion lost in the third round so perhaps a little bit of a question mark about his punch resistance Driscoll again using that long reach left right combination classical boxing style Robson very much more the brawler likes to get in close first time they fought Robson went in with all out aggression this time a little bit more cagey and a fairly close opening round Driscoll perhaps just shading it into the third two more good left leads from Driscoll Driscoll who once said of his opponents they all knock themselves out trying to get past my defence and he really doesn't give too much away there again you saw Robson coming lunging in and just walked straight on to a sweet little left counter from Driscoll and now he's starting to get through with the right crosses as well and you just get the impression that Robson's starting to feel the power of the classy Jim Driscoll right hand Robson just soaking it up trying to land body shots in close but all the better work coming from Driscoll and already this fight is starting to look a little bit one-sided such an inviting target you'd think that chin of Driscoll he's the one who's doing the pace forcing and another good right hand from Driscoll well the champions looking firmly in control sweet defensive skills and lovely timing another good right hand from Driscoll doubling up on the left hook Robson in this third round is being given a boxing lesson well he won that one by a street Robson's now in the fifth round got to find something special to try and turn this round because the tide is going against him And there's only one way that Spike Robson knows to try and do that and that's through all-out aggression he's got to risk it he's got to go for Driscoll because if he just stays in there and tries to box him he's gonna get a hiding so much variety in Driscoll's work saw the right hook over the top into the side of Robson's head and then the body shots Robson trying to draw him into a brawl trying to rough him up but in landing one shot he takes three or four in response and then finds an invisible target two more snapping left hands from Driscoll left hand left hook followed by the right cross Apart from anything else, you get the impression in the clinches that Driscoll's the stronger man there as well. Good right hand. 
Robson backed up once again Driscoll I think senses that he can take this man out he's looking to tee off with the big right hands over oh good shot there it was he'd been looking for that one Robson straight up again but Driscoll has got Robson in all kinds of trouble here in the fifth round and another tremendous right hand from the champion he'd been looking for that right and it caught Robson right on the temple on the left temple and Robson well the bell can't go too soon for him he's all over the place here one more big shot you get the impression might be enough he's bravely coming back but Driscoll's looking to unload Driscoll toying with Robson now just teeing him off with the left hand and wait for the right there it was again but this time Robson just manages to cover up closing seconds there it is the bell to end the fifth and a huge round for Driscoll somehow Frank Spike Robson the 34 year old from South Shields has managed to survive into the 11th round but it's been a wonderful exhibition of skills from Driscoll bravery from Robson virtuoso stuff from Driscoll another fast left lead from the champion the right hand though is the danger punch Robson doesn't look as though he's got a great deal left in the tank another good right hand from Driscoll and another one and once more now Robson's in trouble two big right hands and Robson just holding on well that wasn't the prettiest knockdown you've ever seen but Robson is all over the place and it was the two right hands before it which did the damage oh and I don't think this fight has got too long to go now the referee's taking a good look at it Mr CH Douglas outside the ring and Driscoll is powering on the punches Robson somehow is managing to stay upright and there it is the fight's all over Jim Driscoll has won once again a brave effort from Frank Robson but Driscoll here at the National Sporting Club was quite superb reigning British light heavyweight champion Len Harvey meets Jock McAvoy for the Empire title London 10th of July 1939 Len Harvey in the striped shorts the lighter shorts in his 20th title fight an incredible career professional for 19 years opening round not too much between them real rough and tumble action McAvoy landing with a big right hand and so into the third Harvey cut over the eye and his wife has left the hall it's turning out to be one of the most evenly matched fights that London's seen both these fighters into their 30s and still giving tremendous shots in the final round Harvey leads two to one in previous career meetings and there can't be too much between them this time closing seconds of the fight and the bell about to go has Harvey done enough the referee has no doubt and Len Harvey is the British and Empire light heavyweight champion. Bruce Woodcock challenges Jack London for the British and Empire heavyweight titles. London, 17th of July, 1945. Naturally, the fight opens up slowly. Both men are cautious, weighing each other up. London, bronzed, has over two stone in hand, but he's carrying an abdomina on his shoulders. He's at least nine years older, but there's not much between them in height and reach. London, heavy, has to set himself for those powerful heavy swings. Woodcock, on the other hand, keeps poking out that left, jabbing London in the face.
both men come to close quarters, exchanges are very even. London's attacking more to the body, with Woodcock jabbing away at his face and scoring points at long range. The crowd's rather quiet, but they're watching every move. Both boxers are taking quite a time to make their openings. By the contrast in styles, London crouching slightly, ready to let loose a swing with either hand, Woodcock, more upright, gloves well up, chin well tucked in, jabbing away with a powerful straight left to keep his opponent at bay. At the end of the round, they really start getting to close quarters. Woodcock's making use of his fast footwork to keep clear of many of those swings of London. Here, for instance, he makes London miss badly, just as the gong goes for the end of round one. And so we come to round five. London, perhaps sensing himself a shade behind on points, sends over a left and lands on Woodcock's face. The Doncaster boy's face goes down into London's shoulder. And as they come away from the clinch, blood streams from Woodcock's nose. London sends home another punch. And as the glove comes away, there's an ugly red smudge right over Woodcock's face. London, sensing blood, goes after his men like a tiger. He attacks fiercely to the body and to the face. And slams Woodcock about the body right onto the ropes until the end of the round. At the end of the fifth round, some of the ring experts think that Woodcock has had it. Certainly, he looks much more tired than at any other period of the fight. London's fans' hopes now run high, and London becomes the favourite. Round six, and it's obviously London's advantage to force the pace. But Woodcock, game as ever, comes back at him, Smothers London with a flurry of blows, forces the champion back on the ropes. They have a bundle. Woodcock gets in some telling punches. Again, London comes in, and Woodcock just partially rode that straight left to the face. But Woodcock this time, and he's got London down and out of the ring. No, London's just in out of the ring. He caught London off his balance, and Woodcock slammed over left and right, and two left to the face, and he got London on the on the on the floor. London dropped up immediately, and Woodcock three off his man. The entire crowd here up on their feet. It's just a tremendous swing round. In comes London, left and right to the face, and now Woodcock left and right to the face, and he's just got London down. Woodcock has smashed his man again, left and right to the face, and London is down. Tremendous turn round, the referee's counting, London's getting up on one knee, he's watching his corner, and up he gets at nine, no! London has saved the beat account, Woodcock is the winner! British heavyweight hopeful Henry Cooper takes on America's Zora Foley. London, 14th of October, 1958. And a 
stake is a chance for Henry Cooper to fight for the world heavyweight title against Floyd Patterson if tonight he can beat Zora Foley, the man from Arizona, the man that America claims is the legitimate challenger to Floyd Patterson. It's Cooper on the left. He's about two inches taller, this blonde man from Bellingham in Kent. Two inches taller, but he's giving away nine and a half pounds to Zora Foley. Foley not very tall, but he's massively built. Well muscled, particularly around the arms and legs. But in this first round, it looks very much as though Foley is, in fact, a worthy contender for the uh, world heavyweight title because he's moving fast and he's moving sharply. And he's beating Cooper to the punch with the left hand. Watch those stinging left shots and those beautiful full uprights from Zora Foley. It's Cooper a little bit out of distance with the left hand. Foley looks really good and classy in the opening stages of this contest. And Foley obviously has heard about Cooper's left hook because you'll notice that always he's moving around to his own left hand. He's edging away to the left to keep away from Cooper's left hand. And he's keeping plenty of distance between himself except when he chooses to go in. He's not letting Cooper really get to work with the left hook or the left jab. Foley very clever at tying his man up inside and he comes out best in these clinches. And here's Cooper back to his corner, and we're all saying that the ring side now has Cooper bitten off more than he can chew. They come out to the third. Cooper on the right, taller, blonde. Worried possibly about the left eye, because it's the left eye that invariably gets cut when he fights. And Polly knows this, and he's trying to cut that right eye, that left eye. Do you see how he put that right across there? Cooper must try and protect this left eye of his because it really is vulnerable. And once that goes, it's a terrible handicap against the man of Polly's class. Nice left counter from Henry Cooper, one of the few good punches so far that he's put in in this third round. Whenever he gets the chance, Foley is stabbing away at Cooper's left eye. And there's a punch, and that punch opens Cooper's left eye. It's bleeding now. It's bleeding above and below. In this third round, four good rights from Foley, and Cooper is on the floor. He's on one knee. He's not badly hurt, but he's dazed. He's taking a rest. He comes up at eight, and Cooper is in trouble, bleeding from above and below the eye. He's got to watch Foley's right. Four of those went in that time, and the last one put Cooper down. Cooper at bay is a picture of a man at bay. The Englishman in desperate trouble as Polly comes forward. But at this crucial stage of the fight, when Polly should be going all out, look at this American, the man they say is number two in the world. He's not, he's not really got the killer instinct. He's not going to Cooper and really punishing him as he should be. He's got the chance to win in this third round, but he's not throwing it up. Well, there's the end of the third, and you can see that Cooper was let right off the hook. Polly almost had him at his mercy, and then let him go. It's been amazing the way that Polly has faded out in this fight, because he made such a promising start, and he really has tailed off now. He's not half the man he was. For a man who's had twice the experience of Cooper and has met some very tough opponents, and has beaten Nino Valdez, the scourge of English heavyweights. Polly is at the moment a disappointment. But not a disappointment for Cooper, because Cooper now is really getting on top. And although I don't make him uh, in front yet, that lead is really being narrowed right down. And now we're in the ninth round. And at the beginning of this round, I only made Polly a quarter of a point ahead. So Henry Cooper is right in the fight with a chance to win and the whole of Wembley knows it. Cooper being pushed to the ropes there more than a punch. But Cooper still Im impressively jabbing away with the left hand at every opportunity. Poking it all the time. It's not into, into Polly's face. Polly gets a warning for rubbing his head up against Cooper's eye. And Cooper's eye now, which has been terribly well patched up by his corner, has begun to bleed quite copiously again as Polly rubs his head against it in the clinches. But Cooper is undismayed and undisturbed 
He's boxing the right way. He's outboxing and outjabbing Zora Foley, the number two in the world. Beautiful left hands all the time to Foley's face. Not much variety about it, but you don't need variety if you're doing well with one particular punch. And Henry Cooper is doing well with his left jab. and you can see that Cooper probably didn't hear the bell because there's so much noise being made here at Wembley and he wants to carry on the fight against Laura Foley they come out for the 10th now and I've got them exactly level on points it's all on the last round and Wembley Pool, 10,000 people here in Wembley Pool know that it's everything depends on the last round and they're cheering Cooper to go in now this is the last round here's the chance coming now for him to fight Floyd Patterson if he can win this round he's probably won the fight and they want Cooper to go in now Never mind about the cut eye, never mind about Zora Foley's right hand. Going Cooper, going and win. <laughs> Cooper with his back to us, still jabbing away with the left hand, giving it everything he's got. Look at that tame left lead from Foley. He hasn't got much spirit left, but Cooper has. Cooper carrying the fight here, pushing Foley to the ropes above it. People are going mad with excitement all around me and behind me. Standing toe to toe now, Henry Cooper is there. Funny, look at this effort he's putting in at the finish here. That cloud of smoke coming up over the ring. It's almost as though explosions are taking place in the ring, and they are, because Cooper now doesn't care about anything, he just wants to win. And he's standing there, absolutely, toe to toe, and he's going to slug it out for the final bell. And there is the final bell, and Henry Cooper has won! He's won it on that last desperate round. Henry Cooper wins and gets his chance to fight Floyd Patterson for a world title. British middleweight champion Terry Downs faces top American contender Joey Gardello. London, 11th of October, 1960. Terry Downs on the right-hand side of your picture, getting a tremendous following among British fight fans. A real all-action fighter. They call him the Paddington Express. The crashing, smashing, dashing Terry Downs. Well, he may be just one fight away from a world title. He's gunning for a shot against Paul Pender. And if he can come through this, which is a tremendous test, because Giardello is still a very, very live contender himself. If Downs can come through this, then maybe he will get that shot at the world title. Good right hand from Giardello, looking a little bit flabby around the midriff. Carmine Tilelli, as he was born from Brooklyn, turned professional and fought out of Philadelphia in his early career. Nice left hand from Downs. Not too much in this opening period. Two fighters just trying to find out what each has to offer. So many good fighters in this middleweight division at the moment. Sugar Ray Robinson, Carmen Basilio, Dick Tiger all on the fringes. Of course Tiger who beats Terry Downs early in his career. Two good left hands from Giordelli. Well, not too much between them. Into the sixth, and Downs has been building up points well behind that left lead. Giardello, a little bit more ponderous in his approach. Only six months since he drew against Gene Fulmer, though, so that shows that Giardello himself is still a very powerful middleweight. Good right hand from Downs in close. And a good body shot. Downs who learnt his boxing in the Marines. Such a committed and brave fighter.
good left hand from Downs and the uppercut he's putting his punches together well now Giardello being out gamed in that round and that's a big round for Terry Downs well Downs looking on top into the seventh two good right hands though from Giardello and another one and Downs doesn't want to hang around and stand around and take too many of those soaks up a body shot as well Downs going boring in with the head Giardello's corner Lou Duva there being told to shut up by the referee well this is real toe to toe action now and Giardello having had a very very rocky sixth round is right back in it in the seventh Downs who's been working behind that left lead he's probably ahead on the scorecard at the moment but maybe not too much between them and Giardello is having a good round in the seventh another good left body shot does have a tendency to drop the right hand though and Downs can see that and he's going scoring in with two good left hooks to the head Diodello just wants to lead on after taking those shots and well he might he just tends to leave that right hand low and he looks a little bit unsteady as he came away from the ropes and Downs maybe senses that two more good jabs from Downs and then he makes Giardello miss well that was a fascinating round Giardello starting well Downs coming back so into the tenth and final round and is the crowd pleasing Terry Downs going to get the win he needs to move him towards a world title shot Giardello flat footed good left though down still looking full of bounce full of energy the younger man of course covered up well and took those lefts from Giardello on the gloves and then beats the American to the punch Giardello trying to unload with hooks but once again Downs covering up well and that's the end 10th round over and Terry Downs has won it Downs gets the win he needs and there's the celebrations in the Downs corner and well they might because he's moving now towards a world title shot and the future is looking very very bright indeed for this crowd pleasing man from Britain Terry Downs a fine victory here tonight